Good morning guys. I'm Siobhan, a first year medical resident. It's Saturday morning and I just got to the hospital. And today I'm gonna to be bringing you on a call shift. So you'll be staying with me all day while I'm seeing patients on the ward and all night while I'm seeing patients in the emergency department. Every day has its own adventures. So let's go and let's see what today brings. Right, so we just divided up the list. I've got um, 13 patients to see in different parts of the hospital. So first thing I do is I sort of look at the list, figure out where the patients are. And then after that, um, I sort of prioritize things based on if anyone's sick. So if anyone's not doing well, I'll go and see them first. Then second priority is anyone who needs to get discharged. So at this time, no one's particularly ill. People are all stable, knock on wood. Hopefully it stays that way. So first thing I'm gonna do is go and see if a patient can get discharged. It all depends whether her hemoglobins, where red blood cell count, has stayed stable, um, making sure she hasn't been bleeding for a couple of days, and then she can, she can get going. Oh man, discharges always take way longer than you expect. <laughs> so I'm just going to be making some follow-up appointments for this patient, and um, then dictating a discharge summary, which goes to the family doctor, um, and she's got to see an infectious disease doctor, and an orthopedic surgeon. So making sure everyone knows what's been going on. Wow, this day is going by so quickly. So of those 13 patients that I had to see, I still have like four of them left. So gotta head downstairs, see some more. Wow, this is truly the most busy day I've had, I think, ever. This is pretty crazy. I, it's now uh, 5.15 and I'm being called down to go to the emergency department. They actually called me about 30 minutes ago and I still have to finish up seeing patients. So now I'm finally done seeing my 13 patients and dealing with all the stuff that came up during the day. And apparently there've already been nine consults down in the emergency department. So that's nine people who came in that internal medicine had, had to go and um, already see and bring into hospital today. So now let's see, let's see how many are waiting when I get down there now. Ah. 5.30 and I've already had 19 pages. Crazy. Maybe that means that all the pages will be done for the night. So I was just at a Code Blue where I was doing CPR and it was a patient that was in um, droplet precautions. So it was a really, really tight mask and you can see how red my face is, and that's actually from the pressure of the mask. And it's really hard work, so I really worked up a sweat. Anyway, amazingly, uh, this patient pulled through. And um, to be honest, most codes that I've been to where patients' hearts stop or they stop breathing, most of them don't come back. So this was a really amazing thing to see and to be a part of. So now I've got to head back down to the emergency department because that uh, code blue sort of interrupted the consult. So I've got to get back down there, see this patient and admit them. It's me. Okay, water break time. I always manage to get super dehydrated by the time I'm post call. Um, so anyway, one console done, and I think I'm just gonna see if there's another one pending before I go upstairs. Oh man, guys, I'm getting really tired. You can always tell when I'm getting tired because there's no more stairs. It's all about the elevators. <laughs> oh done the second really consult here. and I'm actually able to just grab some sleep right now um, before I get paged about the next one. So this is the key box where we get our um, call room keys. Basically just swipe our badges here and then it asks me to remove key and I get to put in the key number that I want. What? No more keys allowed? Okay wait, let me just try a different one. No more keys allowed. Okay, that doesn't bode well for tonight. It was so fast, security just came and hopefully fixed it, so let's try it now. All right, machine, it's just you and me. Grant me some access. Okay, remove key. Ah, amazing. 
Target acquired. Let's check it out. So, in 25. Okay, so pretty classic room. Chair, bed, desk, coat hanger. All I really need. 4.30 a.m. Heading down for consult number three. Just trying to try to wake up right now. <laughs> Feel like I could just lie down on one of these. <laughs> so far I've had 29 pages. It's 6.15 now. Just had the second code blue of the night. So that was the second patient whose heart stopped and um, she's heading down to the ICU. And it's very strange because now that job is done and I'm just heading back uh, to the emergency department. You can hear my pager going, so um, gotta go. It's now 10 a.m. I just met up with all the different teams that I was covering tonight and where I admitted patients. And now I'm gonna go back to my call room, grab my stuff, and then freedom! I'm gonna go home and have a really long nap. <laughs> So in medicine, we do a lot of debriefing. So let's debrief. So during the day, I saw 13 patients, busy. Um, and then overnight, admitted three patients. Um, one of them came in and had, was really decreased level of consciousness, wasn't waking up, turns out a bad infection. So we're treating that. The second one ended up having a pulmonary embolism. And that's basically when a clot travels and gets stuck in their lung and then you can develop a lot of shortness of breath as a result which is what brought this patient in and then the third patient that I saw um, had a stroke and came in um, with a lot of weakness on one side of their body and then as you know there were two code blues overnight I will definitely be telling you guys lots more about these types of emergencies in the next uh, month or two because I'll be doing rotations in the intensive care unit and dealing with this all the time so I'll tell you more about it later but before going home we've got the featured question of the day and we're going to be answering Daniela's question and she's asking about getting paged at home as a doctor. So I would say there's sort of three main reasons that you might get paged at home. First is if you're on home call, which basically you're at home, you're supposed to be at home, and if you're needed in the hospital you'll get paged and you'll come in. The second reason would be if um, say you discharge a patient and one of the community pharmacists might have a question about the dose, or the medication change that you've done, so they'll page you and maybe you're at home at that time, maybe it's a Saturday morning, who knows, then you just call the pharmacist back and make a clarification, it's pretty simple. The third reason that could happen, sometimes happens to me, and that's when I just happen to leave my pager on and someone from the hospital might think that I'm still in the hospital or they don't realize that I've gone home because I was on call the day before and I get paged sort of by accident. I know some of my friends actually turn off their pager, but I'm too scared that I'm going to forget to turn it back on, so I just leave it on all the time. Anyway, I hope that answering this question didn't just jinx things because I'm gonna go home now and I hope that my pager does not go off. So, knock on wood. 